guys, and welcome to my um, latest monthly roundup uh, for the month of May now. And um, I weren't joking when I said it was going to be quite a busy month. There's been a lot of stuff that I've had here for testing. Uh, a lot of stuff has come in. A lot of stuff has got to go back very shortly, which is a shame. We have to say goodbye to the, um, the BMC Pure Deck, which has served me so nicely for quite some time. Um, and I managed to do pretty well with how long I've loaned it for, so I'm not going to complain. Um, so yeah, I'm going to get straight into it because, well, it's going to take quite a while to get through everything I've done, so I'm going to try and keep things a bit briefer, keep things a bit more polite, and um, yeah, let's get down to it. So, um, where to start, I guess. Um, I, think, I guess this is an okay place to start. Um, what we have here is the um, the NAD Viso HP50 headphones um, and they're a pair of headphones that have made quite a splash recently so they're just a, um, a portable can, closed back um, nothing too expensive, nothing uh, I think they're around £200, £225 I think to be precise um, so I mean, not, I'm not saying they're cheap but they're not anything that's meant to be high end and um, they're from NAD who as far as I'm concerned haven't really done anything in the headphone market up until now where they released um, the visor range so the, the HP50s and a in-ear monitor as well which I've not had a chance to look at and they've really caused quite a um, bit of buzz around them um, on the forums and such and from some quite uh, highly regarded websites, especially ones that I regard quite highly. Anyway, so um, I was quite excited about them, and um, right off the bat, they're a, they're a really nice headphone. Um, they have plastic cups, and I'm not a big fan of the shiny plastic cups, but I do really like the headband, it's got nicely cushioned. The yokes and the slider is all metal, and it feels really nice. It has a nice click to each, each step of the um, adjustments. And um, you have nice soft pads. Oh, and the, obviously the cup swivel, so you get a really nice adjustment on your head, as you can see there. Um, I get a really good seal with these, they isolate well. Um, they have a lot of room for your whole ear inside the, um, the cups, which is um, quite nice. Um, you get a few cables, you get a they have, obviously have removable cables, you have um, a, they're both flat, which I'm not a big fan of, if I'm honest, the cables are probably the, one of the worst bits in the whole package, but um, you can go into either side, the left or the right side, depending on whatever you prefer, I've used them a little bit with my computer, and obviously everything's on my right side, so it just makes sense that um, I have them on the right side, otherwise it, the cable just goes across me, that's what I've got on the right side. Um, but yeah, left side, they obviously work daisy chaining like, which is nothing special, it just make it basically is a glorified splitter. The uh, opposite side becomes an output, I'm never going to use it I don't think, but you might think that's cool I guess. Um, the sound of these, um, yeah, it, 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 it did impress me, okay, it did impress me, um, you know, considering for what they are, there is quite a warm sound. It's really spacious sound, they have what they call room feel, which I just thought would be a gimmicky name for something about the headphones and not really do anything. And I'm not saying they've got a sound stage like the HD800s or the Fostex TH900s, but they've got a really nice sound stage um, for a closed back headphone, just a portable can from that, and it's really, really nice. It's well imaging the space you've got. It's just, it just has a little bit of room around your head, which is not anything too much, but it's just nice to not have another portable headphone as a crash helmet of sound. So for that reason, they're really nice. As I said, the sound's a bit warm, it's quite lush. We have a little bit of a mid-bass hump. We've got nice, deep sub-bass extension. The mid-range remains clear, and the treble's really smooth. Um, they're not the most detailed, and they, they don't sound as natural, certainly, you know, when I compare them to like my Bears and like T5P, they're not the most natural sound and they, you know, but, you know, that's a £700 price difference and, um, 
You know, they're really smooth, really nice bass. It's a little bit emphasized, overemphasized. It's not bassy or anything, but it's just a bit warm and overemphasized with a little bit of extra decay on it. And it's just a nice, smooth, inviting sound. However, as I was sitting there thinking, I, you can't help but think for the same price you can get a um, ZMF headphone modified T50RP. And personally, I think this is more finesse, it has more distinction to its sound, it's got better extension on both sides, better sound staging, better detailing, and it's not a lot more, and I can't help but think, if more at all, I think, you know, $450, it's about 220 250 quid maybe, maybe 280 I'm not quite sure because the price, um, price has changed, but um, personally, I can only find myself going for these over these. But, that being said, these look like a bit of a uh, mammoth of a headphone next to the, the Visos, and these are one cool looking headphone, you can't, you can't take that away from them. And, um, I see why they're creating a buzz. They're they're a great looking headphone. They're um they're really nice sounding. They're comfortable. You know, you get a nice little pouch with them. You get two cables. You know, it's just you can see why. And I, I have to compliment that on the job they've done. They're they're a really good headphone. And although I'm not going to you know recommend them as the headphone to get in the price range or the close portable headphone to get. I will go ahead and say. They should definitely be an option for the reason that they can do things and they look really nice and you know that things like the ZMFs can't and you know they're still a lot better than something like the Kef M500 which I threw off my ears when I've demoed them a few times at shows and um, you know they're a lot more DL for a similar signature to like something like the Bowers and Wilkins P5 or whatnot or P7 or whatever the biggest one is. So um, for that reason, yeah, I think now they've done a really good job with their first headphone, and um, I hope they uh, keep going. I hope they make something a bit more higher end. That'd be really cool because they've definitely got, you know, as in a close back higher end, maybe something like sort of in the T5P press ones. Because that's the first headphone I wanted to look at, and um, let's move on. So um, I've already spent more time on any single product than I wanted to, so um, try and keep things a bit briefer. Hopefully you don't mind that. Let me know if you'd rather me spend a little bit more time. It's up to you really, but um, as I said, I, I like to go in detail on my written reviews and just give you a brief outline of the products here on my YouTube channel. So the next product we're going to look at is the Fostex TH900 um, we have here. Um, it's a much higher end headphone, um, it's actually one of the more expensive headphones out there, um, especially for close back, it might be one of the most... Other than like some um, older models like the Sony R10, it's probably the most expensive close back. Obviously the uh, LCD, LCD XC in the UK is more expensive than this because this has had a few price drops, but originally they were around the same price. This is about £1,200 you can get it for now. So um, it's a close back headphone, but when I say it's a close back headphone, um, it's up to you how literally you take that because this isn't a portable headphone. I'm not... You can just see how much it's shaking on my head when I'm just doing that with it. You're not taking this on the train, you're not taking this out commuting, it's not isolating the noise on an airplane. It's a home used headphone, but it has the benefit of being close back, so it's not going to leak sound and annoy, you know, my mum for example who's sitting there, and it's not going to, you know, if the family are being a bit annoying and loud, it will block the majority of that out, which something like the HD800 won't be doing. So. There is perks for it being a um, closed back headphone, but just don't expect this to be a portable can by any means. Um, they're overall, the, the cups are beautiful, they're wooden, but they've got an Arushi from um, Japanese lacquer, which is beautiful, um, and it's like a platinum plate and Fostex logo. The headband does feel a bit weak, um, and uh, the cables are hardwired, which is annoying. You know, you have to get them re cable just to balance them, it's not just a case of buying a new cable for example, if anything did go wrong again it's not just to buy a new cable for example. Um, they're made by Fostex, um, obviously they're, these are an evolution of the uh, old Denon D2000, D5000 and D7000 line which were OEM from Foster, the parent company of Fostex. So um, these are, 
you know, a top end headphone. They are a high end headphone. They are one of the best headphones out there. For that. You know, I'm not questioning that. And I said it in my written review, it's just a choice of what sound sort of signature you want to go for in your high end headphone. And you know, what quality you need because personally, I'm going to go with the HD800s over these most days of the week because that's just the sound preferences I have. But that's not necessarily going to be your sound preferences which could be completely different and you're going to enjoy the more musical sound of these every day of the week over the HD800s. You know, these have quite a warm sound. Um, you know, the bass is absolutely delicious. It's, um, it's juicy, it's warm, it's spongy, it's got body, it's got impact, it's got amazing extension of sub bass. But because of this, you do lose a little bit from the mid range. And we'll take this with a pinch of salt because the mid range is spectacular. It's still, these, as I said, these are a top end headphone, but when you compare them to other top end headphones like the Beta Dynamic T1, my T5Ps, the HD800s, that's when the mid-range can be seen as a bit distant and a bit vague and not as detailed or as transparent as others. The treble's smooth, um, extended, really doesn't do anything wrong. It's only the mid-range that leaves me a bit disappointed. And for a close back, these sound stage and image, absolutely phenomenal. phenomenal? Oh, I can't even speak today. <laughs> absolutely excellent. The, um, oh, my HG 500s are down in the case there. But these actually have... Uh, as good a sound stage as I would say as my HD 500s, if not, it's sometimes even more impressive because the HD 500s ain't got a great sound stage for an open back, and he's an absolutely amazing one for a close back. So, um, spacious sound. As far as bass goes, you, this is that. These are absolutely stunning. Um, a little bit vague in the mid range and a great. Does nothing wrong. Smooth treble. Not the most standout, but it's got nice clarity and it's got nice. Um, Nice detail to it. Um, the other thing about the Scrape Valleys is how well they got with most genres. They are, they are a genre, a genre wizard. They they get on well with everything. Um, I've never put these on with a track and gone, nah, these headphones just don't suit it. They do rock, they do pop, they do classical, they do jazz. There's just a lot of great qualities that, that let these get along with a lot of head um, music. Um, and the other thing is they you know they do upscale nicely. Um just they're 32 ohms, that's or oh, 35 ohms, that's why I got onto that. Um or 25 ohms. Oh god my memory is awful. But um, the reason I got onto that is because don't just think well that you know they're easy to get loud, you know, you can get them loud with your iPhone, but they still want a good sounding source, you know, they sound great off my quest style. You want a nice back. They're not the most transparent, but it still is worth giving them something that they're going to strive for. So that's worth noting as well. So that's the Fostex TH900. A great headphone, just again depending on what you're after in headphones. So let's move on to another top end headphone then. Um, one a bit older this time. And um, something you're all going to have heard of, and if you haven't, where have you been? But um, these are the Sennheiser HD800s. Um, as I said, they're an absolute famous headphone, they're a thousand pounds, um, they've had a lot of innovation and um, development going to these, um, where Sennheiser tried to make the best headphone they could possibly make with a dynamic driver, um, I love the design of them, they look like something real space age, um, they're so light as well, um, and they've got so much space in the, um, in the, in the cups that you know, your ears have loads of room and that they're so comfortable. Which is something I didn't mention about the Fostex TH900, they're also very comfortable and really soft pads, a lot of space in them as well. So um, these obviously open back, these don't isolate, they leak, but you know, this is they're for home use. And but these are the most transparent sounding headphones, well, that I've ever owned. Um, obviously some other stats, for example, might be more transparent, but these are the most transparent headphones I've ever owned. They're so detailed. They're like a portal, like a clear, transparent portal into your music. And um, a lot of people say they can be a bit too trebly, um, a bit too harsh, but I think it's all really dependent on what, what amp you use. And I've been using this Quest Old CMA H100R, which you've, um, I've reviewed on here before. And um, it's made for the HD800s, and the synergy is amazing. The treble is smooth, but detailed and extended and airy and oh, it's crystal clear. The mid-ranges are 
Again, really natural sounding. The detail is just phenomenal. Oh, I can't. Why am I using the word? I can't use it again. Um, <laughs> what am I doing? Um, yeah, the detail is just and the clarity and all, all these words just come to mind. It's just, it's like, it's amazing. Um, and the bass, don't don't write off the bass. The bass is articulate. It's punchy. Um, it's really extended. Throw some test tracks at these. These show off some really deep bass. That they are a really great headphone. And honestly, people say they're mainly suited for classical, and they do a great job with my classical DSD collection. But I enjoy using them for everything. I use all sorts of music with these, and these I sit there with a smile on my face with whatever music I'm listening to. These are an amazing headphone, and, and as I said. They're my cup of tea. Um, the TH900 might be your cup of tea. The T1 might be your cup of someone else's cup of tea. The Hyatt HE6, the LCD3, these, they, they, they're all just top end headphones. They're all expensive, and it's just finding the one that's right for you and not. See, I can compare the Fostix and these for ages, but that's only how I feel. And I'm always going to be biased this because I prefer the sound signature of the HD800. But that's just me. That's just my preferences. That's just what I've been using it with. So. As much as I can review them and anyone can review them, I, I do always recommend listening to them and finding out what one you prefer because that's the most important thing at the end of the day, not what I prefer, but what you prefer. So, um, yeah, also you might have noticed that silver cable he's using with them. And yeah, I'm using the Effect Audio 4 silver cable with these, and it's a pure silver OCC cable. And it's so like a voodoo, really. No one does is people stay away from it because a lot of people find these a very bright and treble head, trebly headphone, and silver cables are bright. Um, but that's not the case I found with this silver cable. I found it very balanced, very neutral, with great smooth treble response. Um, it just adds to the the clarity of the treble, but really emphasises that smooth sound that you get with the Quest style. And the bass, you know, is really impactful with it. And the sound stage, which I've not mentioned on these, but these have a sound stage like nothing else. They are so open. Everything's placed perfectly. And that's another reason I love them so much. I love a big sound stage. Um, not much can keep up with it on that. And the sound stage seems to be even better with this uh, effect audio cable. So, um, yeah, um, they stay, stay, stay away from a silver cable, but I'm really enjoying the uh, how the effect audio four silver works with it and it might just be my setup and it might just be this silver cable in particular but it's a, maybe it's just a good quality silver cable it's going to offer a, a nice sound whereas a bad silver cable might offer a bright sound I'm no um, genius when it comes to what cables can and can't do but I will say that I'm really enjoying this combination so um, yes yeah, the HD800 we don't need too far a look at that um, because well it's been around a while and um, well, yeah, it must be about five, six years now. The HD I have been on the market, and they're still a top headphone without a doubt. So um, that's that's all for today for for headphones. Um, just a little bit more on the effect audio cable, but uh, I've been using their four copper on my Bayonet T5P, and um, it really. Blends nice with the T5P. I've always liked the T5P signature. It's quite a bright sound, very forward, mid-range, and bright sound. But this just adds a little bit of um, body to the bass, which really complements the rest of the signature and smoothens out the treble. It's still really detailed, airy, and clear, but just smooths out the treble a little bit. Which not it doesn't overdo it. It just makes it really nice. Um, obviously, D double helix cables done the mod and. Yeah, I'm really enjoying this cable with the Bayonomic T5P. So, uh, yeah, the Effect Audio 4 line, silver and copper there, have really impressed me. So, um, yeah, I just thought I'd note that. And that's an 8 braid version, that's a 4 braid version, I've got my hd 800 So, we've got what, three earphones to look at as well, but let's just take a break from the headphones and have a look at this. The, uh, the Sentrance Hi Fi Mate, which is, which is here up on my desk. Um, it can be a portable, um, it's, it's portable, um, it's battery powered, it's a DAC and a headphone amplifier, and it's only a DAC and a headphone amplifier, it's not a DAC or a headphone amplifier, you don't have analog input and you don't have um, 
a line output. So you can only use the DAC in, you know, the DAC with the headphone amplifier. It's a combination and um, not one that you can change. And it's a, the versatility in these devices is un, is unreal. Um, there's eight different versions in total. There's a there's the LX version we've got here and the normal version. And the difference between the LX, which is this one, has an, and the normal one is this has a USB input and as well as a optical SPDIF input. Um, and then the normal version has the, the USB and gets rid of the optical for a eye device input for your iPad, iPhone, iPod Classic. So it's really depending on what your portable player is. As someone who uses the uh, Astro and Curl kernel range, obviously I have my AK100 or my MS AK100 and my AK120 over there. So um, I can use the optical out of these players into this Sentrance Hi-Fi Mate. Now the Hi-Fi Mate does loads. Oh, skipping in the other four versions. So within them two versions, you have four versions, and the, the, the four output versions, and they're obviously the same for the two um, input versions, if you, if you get my drift. The website makes it a lot more clearer than I'm gonna probably make it. So this is the uh, 4XL version, so you get the balanced 4-pin XLR output, the quarter-inch single-ended output, and the 3.5 millimeter optical combo for, um, headphone jack and then you can get a version with the RSA Cobacon connector so that one instead of the 4 pin XLR same one as ALO and RSA jacks and then it has this, these two again then you can get one that gets rid of the combo optical jack and you get the 2 pin XLR um, 2 3 pin XLR jacks with the uh, quarter inch jacks in the middle same as my Ulong so you get them two in the front and then you can get one for pro use, which is just a two three pin XLR balanced line out. So you can get them four versions in either the optical or the eye device version. So um, it's a DAC amp with all of that going on. And then on the back, which makes it so clever and so different from everything else, is the um, is the options you can do with it. So you've got first of all an output impedance switch. So they knew everyone wanted a one ohm output impedance, that's what the ideal thing is for anything low impedance, for multi BA. So you've got the one ohm output impedance. Going to the middle, you get two ohms, which is still suitable for most things, but just offers a slightly different sound. I found it to be a bit more of a, a smoother bodied sound when you've got the output impedance. And then you have one more switch, which is 11 ohms, which I've used solely with things like the HD800 because it's as I said, a smoother, more bodied sound. It really gets on well with the HD 800s um, and our HD 580s, as it happens. So it's really fun to play around with. And um, you know, this is what I really like about it. Is it you can spend hours just checking all the different combinations of each other. Um, you then have gain, so you've got three gain switches: um, high, medium, and low. So again, for different headphones, you want, you can always um, with low impedance ones. I can put it on low gain, I've got real nice volume control, so that's really good. Um, and then the high gain can let it drive anything you want. I mean, this thing can drive everything. Um, then I have a treble and a bass, which uh, three settings on them. It's a real subtle uh, movement um, in the uh, region, but you can, you, can, you can notice it, but it's not overdone at all, even on the, the double plus um, settings, which is really nice, because you don't want something that's overblown. You don't want overblown bass as soon as you touch the switch. You just want... So make it a little bit more, just, you know, a little bit of warmth added. So you can actually colour the sound of this. And as I said, you can play around. You can go, go full, full bass set, like plus plus bass, plus plus treble, 11 ohms output impedance. And then you can get rid of the output impedance. You can go um, only bass off with treble on, treble on, bass off. Both of them in the middle, both of them. You know, there's so much variation of what you can do with the sound. That it's just allowed you to real tinker with the sound and get what best for your headphones and it also just makes it so versatile you know you don't have to really worry about if it's going to pair with your headphones well because you can make it pair with your headphone well even if it doesn't straight out the box on everything off and it might not pair with your headphones well add a bit of bass and it might be perfect change the output impedance and again you're on a roll so this is what I really like about it and obviously it's balanced and it can drive anything I mean it drives my H1000s really well it drives my um, Hi Fi Run HT 500 with great authority, dynamics, bass, detail, it's, you know. And then you go down to the other end of the scale and you've got my in ear monitors, you know, things like the Vision Ears V6, um, which we'll look at in a second. And yep, it can do them as well. Um, 
with the balanced output it does apply a little bit of hiss, I have found that. Um, and it's still ever so tainted background um, on some of the monitors with the single-ended outputs. So it's worth noticing it's not completely black, but um, it is, um, you know, easily usable. It's nowhere near as loud as something like the ALO RX Mark III-B, which is really hard work with it near monitors. Um, the sound um, is really neutral, balanced reference um, when you have all the switches off. Obviously, you can change that, but um, it's really good, um, really clear. The sound stage isn't the biggest enough. It find a little bit of a dryness um, spell in the upper mid range, but um, for 600, 600 pounds, and for 600 pounds, this is something that um, you can take with you, and it's going to drive anything, anywhere to a great standard. And I really, really do um, find that very impressive. Um, it's not up to up there, up to scratch of my um, my uh, reference portable rig that I made with a, a modded AK120. I'm one of my amps for a line out. It's not quite there. Um, it lacks the black background of that. It lacks the um, dynamics of that. Overall detail as well, and um, it's also not got as quite as clear and um, etched out mid range. But um, for what for how much cheaper this is, it's really quite impressive. And the only downside is it's not completely portable. Whereas my my reference ring I can put in my pocket. You're going to struggle to get. See, these are quite big pockets, but yes. See what I mean by it's not. It's get right. That's in my pocket, so I'm uh, eating my own words there. But um, it's. Well, it's huge, isn't it? If you're not, if you've got jeans on, it's not fitting in your pocket at all. So it depends what you're wearing, but um, I don't find it completely portable. Um, it's more transportable. You can sling it in your bag, take it to the office, for example, and use it at the desk at home. And it, it's a great device. I, I'm not, I'm not trying. I'm not going to take that away from it, and I'm, I'm really impressed with it. Um, there's nothing that can drive so many headphones at such a so well at such a small size, even if I've just so the size isn't as small as it could be. So um, yeah, that's the Centrance Hi-Fi Mate. So um, I've got three in the monitors to look at. We'll start the cheapest first, and that's the uh, Air Audio 2AI we have here. Oh, these are a bit smaller. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll come over for the inner monitors. So here are the uh, Air 2AIs. Um, they're Air Audio's latest um, in a monitor, they're the most entry level one of the range at 200 US dollars. Um, they still come with a nice package, you get the cable, loads of different tips, cleaning tool, and the rest of it, um, which is all nice that they've not um, taken down the toned down the package at, at the cheaper price range here. So um, uh, they're really nicely done. They've scrapped the wooden house, the house in it because of the cheaper price, and you've got a brushed aluminium finish on these which I think is really quite sexy um, but uh, this, and I really like the uh, new improved housing that's no longer handmade they're really uh, well finished and everything so that's really cool um, sound of these is surprising for a dual armature um, it's quite warm um, it's got very solid bass very very solid bass indeed it goes really deep um, it's not too dim to similar to the free AI, free AI base. Powerful, impactful. Um, yeah, really quite, um, really quite nasty base, really, and I, I quite like it as well. Um, even if it is probably a bit too much for my uh, tastes. Um, the mid range, especially the low mids, do take a little bit of impact from this. Um, they sound quite dry. They, they lack a bit of detail. But they're still clear, they're still clear. I'm not going to say they're recessed, which they're not. Um, the low mids take a little, you know, I want the most clarity based either. And the same, the treble's smooth, but um, doesn't have the most spark or extension. Um, and uh, the sound stage is really impressive, it's really wide. Um, sound stage is really wide. Um, it's got nice depth, got really nice imaging in that. And they're quite a fast earphone as well, but um, they're definitely bass driven to an extent. They're warm. They're not bass bass. They're not super bassy, but they're they're, they're one that they're bassier than the four AIs. Not quite as bassy as the three AIs, and the mid range could be a bit clearer. No, no, it's clear. It could be a bit more detailed, is all. Um, 
still always completely audible and the treble's just smooth at the end. So that's the uh, Air Audio 2A. I'll put up unboxings for more background on all these in-air monitors so I'll just get down straight to the point. Um, these are the Duna DN2000s and I wasn't the biggest fan of the DN1000s, they're a bit basic for me. But these are a completely new beast. They're a hybrid, dual BA, which is a TWFK, and a in-house made dynamic driver. They come with a great same package you expect with doing new monitors. Uh, they're well built. Um, look at that there, they're really nicely built. Nice cable, I wish it was a removable cable for the price of uh, 315 US dollars. But the sound is, oh, it's, it's, it's great. Um, it really shows how far um, hybrids are coming. It's uh, articular, really coherent, really everything's blended together. The balance is great. The, the bass is still really impact form, punchy and deep, but um, it doesn't steal the show at all. The mid range is forward, lush, detailed, captivating, and the treble can be a, sometimes a little bit um, sibilant. At times, only if it's there, it's not sibilant earphone, it's just sibilant if the sibilance is there, obviously. But um, it's really detailed as well, and it's really extended. They're, they're an extended, smooth, coherent, forward sounding earphone, and they really hit my uh, what I like in an earphone, and I've been really impressed with them. And also, playing around with the different sounds you get from different um, exertion depths with the different. Um, O-rings you get included. I really like the comfort of them. They're lighter than the DM1000s, and you get all these adapters. Are oh, they? They're great earphones. I've I'm, I've really been digging them. Um, they're one of the better ear options at the price by um, quite quite some way I think. So um, that's a Duna DM2000. I'm very impressed with these. Now going all the way up the uh, ranges to the Visioneers V6, a six driver custom. I've got a universal. Um, version of here. Um, it's a 1900 euro, uh, 1900 euro, it's about 1800 pounds custom. Um, and that's for the version with the um, the switch that changes between two different sound signatures. That's the X control, or you can just get one of the two sounds, so it's X1 and X2, you can get just the X1 for I think 1500 or 1600 euros, and just the, you know, the same for that. So you can get one of the sounds for, for about 300 euro less, or you can get the 1900 euro version. Um, which has the two different sounds. So I've obviously picked up it has two different sounds and it's really simple to use. We've just got a little switch here, down and up, and it just you know it's on both of them, you have to do them together. And um one of the sounds, the X1 is a is a warmer, um, more bassy sound, and if I'm honest, I've not been completely impressed by that, especially at the price. It's not the clearest and it's you know, the mid sounds were a bit muffled, and although the sound stage and the bass is great, I've not been too impressed by it, if I'm honest. But the X2, the more neutral tuning, is something else. I mean, I'm really liking that. And I'm so I should be at the price. Um, it's, in fact, it's one of the best IEMs I've ever heard. It's up there with with all the greats that I've demoed, such as the JH13 Freak Phase, the Noble K10. Which, you know, all of them um, is coherent, but a different level of coherency. Everything is one. Extended great on either ends. The detail is amazing. The sound stage is something else. Um, oh, wow, well, yeah, it's. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's one of the earphones you put in, it's like, okay, I'm listening to something serious here. This is an earphone that means business. Um, yeah, and so it should at the price. And if I'm honest, it sounds amazing. But if I'm honest, I don't think, sit and think it's so much better than my Lear LCM5 custom and all the other demos I've tried and loved, such as the GH13. So in that respect, the price could be a bit hard to swallow. It's it's, it's all going to come down to preferences there. Um, I can't make that decision, and I wouldn't say to anyone buy it unless the, uh, the switches is something that you really like because you can switch between that warmer bassier signature and the more neutral um, spacious signature. It's, it's, again, it's, it's, up to, it's up to you but I'll, I'll try and get your hands on it and try it first because it's a lot of money and um, 
yeah, it might not be for everyone. So um, that's what I'm saying. But I'm, I'm blown away by it. I'd love to own one. It's a, it's a great sound. Um, not that you expect anything else at this price, but uh, Visioneers have made a great monitor there. So um, yeah, uh, that's the. Uh, what am I trying to do here? There I am. Um, that's the end for uh, today's roundup. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. I, I've not seen how long it's going to it's been, but it's going to be quite a, a lengthy video. So uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you're not too fat keen on the uh, length, but. Uh, I want to cover as much as I can and I hope you uh, appreciate that. I might have to put links to each different product, but uh, <laughs> no good telling you at the end, but I might put that in the description. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed the video and um, please check out my website. Can it, if everyone could like my Facebook page as well, that'd be really cool. Um, I post everything new I get on there, it's quite cool. Um, it's quite a nice community, people get involved um, on the comments and stuff. So that's, that's quite nice, check it out, like the page like my website and obviously subscribe to the page. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.